Hi everybody, welcome to the Martin County Difference. I'm Julia Sansevier. It's Wednesday, May 3rd, 2017, and we're on Facebook Live. So share this with all your friends. We've got a great show packed with lots of guests tonight. Three segments. I've got the uh, School of Visionary Arts. I've got Lynn Barletta here to my right and Mona Salisbury to her right with Women's Club of Stewart. And together they have uh, combined their forces and are involved in fighting human trafficking with Catch the Wave of Hope, which is Lynn's new organization. We're going to talk about that. And then after them, we're going to have Bob Epp and he went on an honor flight to Washington, D.C. He's going to be next after the ladies. And we'll wrap it up with real history of Martin County with Alice Luckhart and Barbara Osborne. So stay tuned for all that and more. And we'll be coming on the radio, too, very soon. Yeah. One minute now. Okay, on WSTU 1450 AM and WSTUTV.com on the Internet. So call all your friends. Connection this week. on this program are not necessarily those of WSTU Digital 1450. The opinions expressed are those of the program hosts and problem. guests. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time now for the Martin County Difference with your host, Dance and Realtor Julia Sansevier. Good evening, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It's Julia Sansevier yes. with Martin County Difference. May Welcome. 3rd. Thank you. It's May. Hey. Hi, Frank. It's hey. May. I yes. can't believe it's May. No. And uh, it's Wednesday night, so it must be the Martin County Difference at 7 p.m. And we're also on Facebook Live, not only on the radio at 1450 a.m., WSTUTV.com on the Internet. And don't forget, Facebook Live at its own page, the Martin County Difference. So tell all your friends and tune in. And uh, thanks for that beautiful music sting. Um, I've got a great show tonight. We've got lots of guests in the studio. I've got the Mar uh, Lynn Barletta and Mona Salisbury are here. Uh, Lynn is with School of Visionary Arts and Mona is with the Women's Club of Stewart. But together they're talking about Catch the Wave of Hope. It's Lynn's new organization that was formed to fight human trafficking. And then after the ladies, we're going to have a little walk back in history. I've got Bob F., a friend of mine, a World War II veteran, colleague of mine at, at um, Global Banker, and Kathy Gail Sreenan of Southeast Honor Flight. Uh, they went recently to Washington, D.C. I'm so excited to have him here. He is a dear friend. And last but not least, deep, deep back into history with Martin County, we've got Alice Luckhart, who is one of our local historians, and Barbara Osborne is with her, and they'll be talking about the month of May. It's a uh, total immersion in history this month. But really quickly, I just want to give a shout out to my friends at NBC. I said I would do this. Hang on, Lynn. Hang on, Mona. In New York, where we just were, we had the most fantastic Peacock North reunion luncheon. Uh, it was at Sardi's. Bob Costas was the keynote speaker. He was so funny, and it was just really great to see so many dear friends and reconnect with people from news, sports, and entertainment. My husband and I worked there before um, for many, many years, and people came in as far as California. We came from Florida. But big thanks are to Marilyn Altman, Joel Spector, and Lenny Stucker for organizing and making it really a perfect special day. So thank you all. And hi, Maureen. I hope you're watching because I know she always tunes in, so I appreciate that. And a shout-out to my family in Texas. I forgot to say this last week. We went to a family reunion. I've had a lot of reunions. Family reunion in Texas and then an NBC reunion in New York. At Barnes Landing on Lake Livingston, my father's side of the family. Hey, cousins! I said I would do it. <laughs> so thanks for tuning in, and uh, thank you so much, everybody, uh, for tuning in. We've, this, this is going to be a deep topic because it's serious, and it's happening right here. So, Lynn, I'll let you begin how this came to be, to catch the wave of hope. Well, it really started when I went to Singapore in 2015, and I was on an art event and invited to do this to create a wave that would be reproduced in Singapore that would be part of a fundraiser that we would have, we would be able to raise funds for a home called Day Spring for trafficked and abused girls. Mm. And in the process of that, I worked with a young girl who had been trafficked by her parents since age eight, and she was now 18, and they used her to support their lifestyle. And she was just a little girl who was just so shattered, and, and had, she cut herself, and, and, and yet her heart was so open and desiring help, and so she worked with me all week long. Mm. And my brother, who lives there, and my sister-in-law had taken her in to really love her back to healing. And so that was my first real exposure to the depths of human trafficking. And when I came back, 
there was a lot of press on what I'd done over there with the arts, and we raised close to a million dollars in 12 days. Whoa. So it was pretty amazing. That's and we did very a, amazing. We did a mural there, and I worked with uh, children from different nations and helped them to paint a mural a block long. Wow. And so when I got back, I got a call from Mona, <laughs> president of the Women's Club and good friend. Yes. And Mona said, can we do something here like what you did in Singapore? And I said, absolutely, I think we need to do that. And we began the process of putting something together, but found that there was nothing here in Martin County to really help the, the plight of human trafficking victims. And so, you know, when you think about it, in, in America alone, there's 100,000 children are in the trafficking market That's incredible. in our nation. The average age is 12 to 14. And this is slavery, but it's also sex trade? It's, it, this is, I'm just really uh, speaking about the sexually trafficked children okay. and those statistics. Mm -hmm. And the Johns are increasingly getting more violent and more deviant and requiring younger children. Mm. And so the average sale of a child is five times a day, can go up to 20 times a day. And in America, we're talking about 500,000 acts a day against a child at minimum. And so Florida has done better than most states at legislative change, uh, making it a felony to buy sex with a child. But according to Children's Services Council, the, uh, human trafficking increased 54% in 2016 uh, in mm. our South Florida area. So I can just tell you that after meeting with Captain John Perez and Detective Jesse Carde, mm -hmm. uh, this, this is a quote from them. There are brothels operating right here in the Treasure Coast and human trafficking is happening under our nose. The arrests that have been made over the last three years have shown that the brothels are not operating independently. They have been exposed in Martin County, Fort Pierce, Vero Beach, and they're part of a very large network that is national and sometimes international. And so the girls can be tattooed with a barcode oh. or branded by gangs, uh, which will indicate who they belong to. They're beaten, they're drugged, they're terrorized. And some are sent after they've been brainwashed as recruiters into our public schools. And they recruit children who seem to be loners or disenfranchised, foster children are especially targeted. Mm. And they become their friends and they begin to give them gifts and invite them over and they are introduced to the traffic. And Good. so it happens right here in our community. And we were told of stories that happened in Golden Gate mm -hmm. and uh, some very nearby places. Well, that's what I couldn't believe, that it's really right here in Martin County. You think mm -hmm. of Martin County as so safe and secure and that we are isolated from all these bad things in the world, but it, obviously we're not. No. Well, you're so right. One of the things that's tough is for law enforcement to identify problems, and therefore it's hard for them to help. And even people who are victims sometimes don't even see themselves as victims. And that's what one of the things that Catch the Wave of Hope is trying to do, and that is address the warning signs and the dangers of sex trafficking so that people understand when mm -hmm. they should think, oh, this isn't right. For example, if you see somebody with two cell phones and maybe a young girl with an older boyfriend mm -hmm. who doesn't seem to have any obvious source of income. You know, these are things to look for. Wow. It's unbelievable. And, and so this is every income bracket, or is, does it seem to attract the attractive, you know, to the lower echelon of the income brackets? Or Well, certainly the, the income brackets make a child perhaps more at risk. Mm. But children have been taken from the most prominent homes and and well-to-do families and gotten caught up simply because they became friendly with an older guy who gradually gave them gifts, made them feel special, and then after a period of time began to sell them. And oh. the internet is another thing to be aware of because people will pose as 13-year-old boys and they're really much older. So that's thing, and that's one of the things, the awareness is one thing that Catch the Wave of Hope is beginning to make a difference in. Also, they're, they, um, are doing things to restore victims and eventually the goal is to have a transition home to help victims, restore them, give them the kind of training they need, the life skills they need, the therapy they need, and get them to do something that Lynn has actually created called using the power of Art 3 mm -hmm. that gets 
victims to use the right side of their brain, which she's told me is where you receive the trauma and also where the healing begins. Wow. Yes, yeah. yes, that's been proven. And so what happened when I got back from Singapore is I was asked by Juvenile Justice to do a mural at Martin Girls Academy. Yes. And when I completed that mural, the girls were begging me to teach them art. Yeah. And uh, I, it's just such a, a, an amazing place, um, and many of the girls there have been trafficked. And so mm. I began a program there which began developing really from probably my 30 years of experience on the mission field as well as you know, being in the ministry and being trained in inner healing and also being an artist and having an art school. And it all just kind of came together. Yeah. And so I created a program called The Power of Art. And for trafficked and abused victims, it's The Power of Art Three, And it really utilizes the right side of the brain. And while they're quiet, mm -hmm. while they're focused, while they're listening over there, they are drawing upside down and, they're, and it's creating imagery that displaces some of the flashbacks and mm. the post-traumatic stress syndrome mm. that a lot of them experience. And so I begin to work with the therapist team at Martin Girls Academy, and they have had input. I'm supplying the visuals. They're helping me with the input. And we've designed a program that's being uh, professionally written, and I've been asked to present it to all 50 states at the Juvenile <gasps> Justice Conference. Wow. Because when? it's being measured, and, and the girls, they're getting better. And oh. it's so amazing just to see that you can make a difference. Yeah. And that's all we're all about, yes. making a difference. That's and right. I thank you for that. You know, I went on your uh, page, on, and I would I, let's tell everybody how to go to Catch a Wave of Hope, catchthewaveofhope.org, and it's really interesting because you've got videos there, you've got pictures of the girls painting and everything, and the stories are there, not of their unfortunate circumstances, but of their healing, and I think yes. that's to, important to concentrate on the mm -hmm. healing. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how art has awakened their spirit I love that. You yes. are so right. And Julia, I want to thank you for bringing us on the Martin County Difference because oh. you are the Martin County Difference uh -huh. and you do make a difference. Thank and you, you have Nina. you so big. You have made a difference for so many organizations and people yes, by sharing your ability with broadcasting and bringing issues to light and helping folks. And with that, I just want to say that when the women's club got involved, we said to Lynn, what can we do? And we decided, well, the women are good at hosting things. So yeah. that's how we decided to host a gala yes. to benefit Catch the Wave of Hope. And Lynn has been donating through her students at the Visionary School of Arts about 80% of the proceeds, if I'm correct, toward Catch the Wave. But this will be the first large fundraiser to help them get off the ground. Right, and we want to talk about that. That's yes. coming up this weekend. The gala. The Saturday, Saturday night Saturday. Yeah. at the Yacht and Country Club right. of Stewart. From 6 to 10 p.m. And you have a keynote speaker, Emily Fitzpatrick. And it will be cocktails, dinner, and dancing. A lovely evening. Mm -hmm. And piano music by mm -hmm. our very favorite, Maria Juria Beamish. Yes. 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 Maria is always mm -hmm. the one. She's amazing. Wonder. amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. And music and dancing with Ray Gaumont. Gaumont. Uh -huh. Gaumont. Lovely. Gala seats, $150 each. And all they have to do to get them is call or go online. I guess go online to gfwcwomensclubofstuart.com. Mm -hmm. You can mm -hmm. sign up there. Right. And you can be a sponsor if you still want to be, right? Yes. Well, you can be a sponsor. We sent our program to print okay. tonight. Okay. So we, but we certainly uh, will advertise them at the event yeah. if they are a sponsor. Recognize them. Sure. And you can go on PayPal till five o'clock tomorrow. Oh, and good. after that, call the phone number that will be online at GFWC or womensclubofstuart.com. Right. Mm -hmm. Because and we will. And I'll go ahead and give a phone number. Is Jeannie Sylvester's number? This one. That would be fine. It five. says for more information about the fundraiser, call Jeannie Sylvester at five one six. 220-8266. That's 516-220-8266. But of course, just Google Women's Club of Stewart. You do need to put GFWC, and here's a good way to remember it, thanks to Barbara Charlo. Girlfriend's Water Closet. <laughs> <laughs> GFWC Women's, and it's A-N-S, Women's Club of Stewart, all one word, dot com. It's a wonderful organization. I th I can't thank you enough, Mona, for the two years you've given as president of that very fine organization. You have really led us to great heights. We do a lot of good work in the community, and I am so proud of that. I'm so happy to be a part of that because the education of our young people is so important. 
and we do raise money through our house tours and donate that money strictly, directly, right to the kids for high school, uh, coming out of high school to go to college and for the arts. It's our Art is Everywhere tour was mm -hmm. for that. And art is such a healing thing. And I last time I had you on the show was remember it was the um, for the Martin County yes MCOST. I have to, I have to say the acronym mm -hmm. M Martin County mm -hmm. Open Studio Tour. And I just blurted out, I love art. I love artists, but I do. <laughs> it's all about art. And this past weekend going to New York, I got to see, I immersed myself the Tribeca Film Festival and Broadway shows. One about 9/11 that I didn't know I'd even be able to sit through it. And of course, I wept the whole time. But it's mm -hmm. funny too. They mm -hmm. make it funny. It was about the planes that got diverted. 38 planes that got diverted to Gander, Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So anybody wants to go see that, it's come from away. But anyway, I don't mean to get off the subject. But I just want to say the Women's Club of Stewart, that is, they are partnering with Catch the Wave of Hope. That's a local organization of community leaders whose mission is to stop human trafficking. You guys, we must stop human trafficking. There's no other sin greater than that in the world, to turn a child into nothing is yes. terrible children yes. deserve to live in this world free carefree and play and i just we gotta do it so it is a modern day form of slavery adults control everything and you know you, sexual exploitation that's terrible yes it's horrible yes. and one more statistic that i've learned recently is that the children who are exploited last about eight years yeah. oh yes that's their life expectancy yes and most of them are female of course yes so, so Julia, I just want to thank you also for doing this show to bring awareness mm. because bringing awareness is a very first large step. part. This first community step, yeah. is being mobilized. We are watching it happen. People are coming together. They're being mobilized. And, and I have just one thing I keep saying, not on my watch. Right. I cannot let this happen. Then. Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> oh, to cry. I mean, really and truly, it's people with good hearts like this, and we've got to band together and stop this. This is just ridiculous and nasty, and it shouldn't be happening here or anywhere. But certainly, we have to. Um, we have a moral obligation to protect our children, and to see what can happen when when they are treated fairly and well and given love and attention, you water them, you feed them, they grow. Yes. And, and the art is so healing. So go to catchthewaveofhope.org and also go to the Women's Club of Stewart's website. Go to the gala this weekend, $150 is not much to help donate to wipe this out. Yes. And can they drop by the Visionary School of Arts on Indian Street? You can come by Visionary School of Arts and, and you can see the mural that we'll be doing in the, the mural, fall. Right. But the gala is really our jump start. Yeah. This is, yeah. What Mona has done and what the Women's Club has done is just wonderful because it's giving this organization a real foundation and a start mm -hmm. so that we can do the things that we have a vision to do. Thank you. Well, I think we're really happy to do it as a Women's Club, and I want to thank Shawna Ely, who is the chair of the committee, mm. who's been uh, working feverishly with her committee to make this happen, and we're just so pleased. And I would also like to thank some of our sponsors. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, we have some great sponsors at the Platinum level. We have Martin Health Systems, oh. and we have David L. Smythe, the philanthropist. Okay. So we're thrilled. And we also have at the Silver level, Gordon and Donner, Lesser Lesser, Landy and Smith, Lillis Foundation, and Women at Rest. And a big thank you to them so much. We really appreciate Absolutely. all you're doing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sponsors are the wind beneath our wings. So mm -hmm. thank you, sponsors. And it's still not too late. You'll get recognition at the event. Call Countess Kerpatov at 561-596-7581. That's 561-596-7581 and she'll help you get signed up and you can help donate to make this. So if you can't go to the event, at least you can donate to the event. And that would be great. Absolutely. We, we appreciate it all. And it's mm -hmm. Yacht and Country Club this Saturday and it's not too late to get a ticket, only $150. I want to thank Lynn Barletta from Visionary School of Arts and for starting Catch the Wave of Hope. And it was so much fun because in the MCOS tour, and I went by, you had the surfboard, and I did the picture thing. Yes, yes. 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 that was one of the best With the wave. That was. It turned out so well. And I posted that. Mm -hmm. And that helps, too, social media. Mm -hmm. So this is out there on social media for yes. everybody. And thank you, Mona Salisbury, our president of Women's Club of Stewart. I just yes. adore working with you on all the projects. And I think we just have a great group. I know we have about um, almost 200 of us now. Yeah, there are 190 as of today. Yeah. And I want to thank you again for all no that problem. you do for us, Julia. Absolutely. My pleasure. You know what? What else are we here for? Yes. Let's do good. Let's Absolutely. make a difference. So thank you, ladies. And 
thank you everybody for tuning in and now a word from my sponsors i've got sponsors for the show and we'll have our ladies exit and our next guest will be escorted in by my production assistant <laughs> hi richard <laughs> bob? yes bob f will be coming in thank and i just want to thank our sponsors thank our guests thanks mona and lynn thank you and uh, as they exit i would like to thank our sponsors i've got rivercrest insurance they are a local independent insurance agency conveniently located in the prestigious Royal Palm Financial Center near downtown Stewart. They are founded in, in 2002 by Jeff and Nicole Meir. They are family owned and operated. Come on in, Bob. Specializing in personal lines, insurance for your home, auto, watercraft, life, and personal umbrella. Give them a call at 772-463-3113. That's 463-3113 for Premier Insurance gives you peace of mind. And that is from Jeff and Nicole Muir. And also, Francesca Morgan, another person who's doing good in the community, Francesca Morgan Interiors. She had a personal home and garden tour for benefiting Molly's house in a, a couple of Fridays ago. Big success. And she's continuing to uh, benefit Molly's house by, because if you purchase anything at her store, at her shop through June 1st, any upholstery, wallpaper, window treatments, everything like that, you name it. 10% of the sale proceeds will go back to Molly's house. And her shop is at 227 Southeast Ocean Boulevard near downtown Stewart. So give her a call at 286-8676. That's 772-286-8676. Stop by, take a look. They have beautiful things there at 227 Southeast Ocean Boulevard. Thank you, Francesca Morgan of Francesca Morgan Interiors. And now, joining me in the studio is my very dear friend and my colleague from Coldwell Banker, a very fine realtor. I think he invented real estate in Martin County. I'm not quite sure, but he's been around a long time and knows a lot of people, knows where the bodies are buried. <laughs> and that's Bob Epp. Hello, Bob. How are you? I am great. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. And I hear Mr. F Goes to Washington is a new film coming out soon. Yes, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Kathy Gail Sreenan, thank you, Kathy, for coming in tonight and helping us out here because you're in the Public Affairs Division of Southeast Honor Flight. Correct. And I met you in December right. here exactly. in the studio and, um, with Dick Ramsey. Yeah and had a great time talking about that. So we're going to do that all over again, but with my friend Bob. Mm -hmm. So Bob, what did you like best about Washington, D.C.? Well, I, just, I haven't been there since 1950, the last wow. time they shipped me out of here. And I was just amazed at the, 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 the vastness of it. There. Yeah, you, you can know, talk straight whole, through the mic. You know, the whole, the whole size of the place. Yes. It's just, uh, the whole thing's amazing. What really amazed me was the uh, the greeting we got when we came back. That's what you were telling me. That's what I was about to add. The best part of the trip was the yeah. return. Yeah, we come back into West Palm uh, about 7.30 in the evening. We got off the plane, we couldn't get through the airport. <laughs> there was hundreds of people there. Kids, Boy Scouts, you name it, all kinds of groups. Cheers, I thought the war just ended. <laughs> <laughs> well, really you know amazing. what? For us, we can't appreciate you enough and thank you enough for going to war for us. And you were in World War II, yeah, well, and the armed services that you were part of? I was in the submarines in the Pacific in the Navy. Submarines. I remember you telling me you were in the Navy, but in the submarines, good lord. Well, they call me, I went back in the in that reserve, they, I went back in in, uh, in 50 in the uh -huh. Korean War, too. Oh my gosh, so for you three years, but served that, twice. They didn't want me to mess up the war, so they sent me to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> and how was that? I loved it. Oh, North Africa. North Africa. And that's when it didn't, you know, it wasn't Libya yet. It was uh, It was it was Libya, but it, it was, was an English colony. English colony. English, okay. English occupied. Yes. Right, right, right. And Kathy, you didn't go this trip, did you? Yes. Did you? you did well, go. On, on, yes, I was on I was on um I was on Bob's trip. Oh, you were. Definitely. Okay, I go good. On, on pretty much all the all the flights. Okay. But um so that was April 8th and then we have one coming up on May 20th. Okay. And then two in the fall. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, I found out about it, and I started talking to Mark Huffnagel, who's our branch manager at Coble Banker. I went, we got to get Bob on this. I mean, because you're so deserving, and mm. he is the funniest person. Did you find out how funny he is on the trip? <laughs> you know what? Uh, there are, we had about 80 veterans on, wow. the, on the flight. And um, 
So being on the staff, there's a lot going on yeah, behind the sure. scenes, and Very so busy. I, I actually Very wasn't good. able to to find him that day. But um, oh, but okay. Uh, well, I'm sure he kept everybody entertained, and all the laughter was coming from back on his row. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure he keeps us entertained at the office. And Bob, how long have you been in real estate here in Florida? Well, it's 19, we think 60, uh, 69 or 70. Wow, you've seen a lot of changes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you were in Martin County the whole time. The whole time, yes. Downtown Stewart. Oh my gosh! When right. it was confusion a, corner. A one horse town and only there one. Was, there was nothing down there. Only one corner, <laughs> one confusion. They had a movie that opened up on Wednesday afternoon and I think Saturday afternoon. Oh my gosh! At the nothing. Lyric? Was it at the Lyric? Yeah, the Lyric. Yeah, the oh movie. gosh! So that was the movie theater. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And um, when you got into real estate, I remember you were telling me you were up in Port St. Lucie. You did a lot of that. Uh, those. Yeah. Housing well, after a while, uh, I, I went to General Development. They opened a good deal, and I worked right. with them for a while. Right, right, right. And it was really going crazy at the time. They yeah. used to fly people in for weekends and stuff like that. Yeah, in the 70s? Yeah. 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 Very busy. So that sounds like it was a crazy time in real estate. It was. It was wacky up then. Really. Yeah, yeah. And then for some reason, corporate graft or something, they folded up. Yeah. The whole thing. Yeah, well, you know, it seems like it's cyclical in Florida, as, as it is everywhere. And yeah. when I came in in 2005 and got my license, Bob was at the office, and he was very, very helpful, always very kind and considerate. And um, that, so I feel like I've known you all my life as a realtor. Because <laughs> I came in in 2005, and you were there, and you've been there quite a while. And um, got to know Mary, your wife. We would have our company picnics, and that was always a lot of fun. And seriously... You'd want to be at Bob's table. He tells the best stories. Can you tell any here that we can put on the air? <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. I would. I'm not sure I wouldn't go to jail. But, <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, this was this was a little bit of a town where I just drove in it by accident. Ah. I come over the old bridge and no one wasn't there. Wow. And I come over the old bridge and I, I see a big sign. It's a cold beer, the old Triangle Bar. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Right. Right. And I pulled in there and I sat down, and three days later I called New York and said, sell the house, I'm not coming home. <laughs> and that's, that's 50 years ago. Wow. A long time. It's a, wow. good, it's a good place to call home for 50 years. Right? It was, it was yeah. the best move I ever made. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I did the same thing. Oh, <laughs> my husband says he did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you get here, you feel the Same bar, I think, too. Same yeah. bar, yeah. right, right, right. The well, triangle. Unfortunately, the triangle's no longer there, and it became the wine bar. Now, the crush, the, it's yeah. not even there. Yeah. But they, I wish they wouldn't change everything so much. Well, the city owns the land now. They're going to put apartments there. Apartments, 48 apartments, I understand. Yeah. But mm -hmm. now they're changing the density factor. They might do something different. I don't know. Oh, ah. okay. The city's voting on changing the density from 15 up or something. I don't think they're going to change the height, but the density is definitely going to change. The yeah. city, not the county. Right, right. Yeah, because it's city-owned. We'll and that's why I like having Bob around, because he knows yeah. everything. Yes. He knows everybody, and he knows mm -hmm. everything. So tell us more. But I, don't, <laughs> yeah, but I don't say as much anymore. It's got me in too much trouble. <laughs> but the, the city is definitely going ahead and raising its density. Really? Not the county. Yeah. Not the county. I haven't heard the results, but I know they were pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I heard they were putting a hotel down there. No, that, that property, the last I heard, was approved for 48 uh, rental units. Well, That's correct. Know, yeah. That is good, because I know people do want that. You know, they yeah. probably would like to have that. They need it. And they need it, yeah. It would help downtown business. It so would, I think it would. Family. Definitely it yeah. would, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, parking garage would even be better. Oh, yeah, we could use they, a parking they really, garage. They need one down, they do. Definitely right, 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 right. I don't right. know why someone's going to go make a dollar with that. Yeah. And so you served not only in World War II, but also the Korean War? Yeah, they called me back in, you know. I didn't realize that. You, yeah, you well, they said, I was, look, I changed, oh, I was a motor mac in the other they, Were you, uh, you weren't in the submarines in both? No, no. What did they you called do? me back in. And next Here thing you know, closer. I was. Next thing I know, or the next Sorry. thing I know, <laughs> they sent me to a, a radio station in Tripoli, Libya, ah. south of Tripoli, Libya. But that was interesting too. And what did you do there? I ran a transmitter station about 12 miles south of the Mediterranean. Oh, yeah, like right here. Yeah. 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 Cool. And yeah. we brought we, we were a booster station for the Sixth Fleet, the Mediterranean. Okay. And they transmitted. Radio was antique then. Right. And we boosted it to, to Casablanca, Port Laoti. Mm -hmm. Port Laoti went to the Pentagon. Wow. And we were a booster station. Okay. Right. At that thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All of Thank that you. is so integral, and we don't think about all the things that have to go on. Well, we had we had transmitters. Well, our main transmitter tool was, uh, 
about five feet wide and about eight feet tall. Good. A transmitter tube. Oh, One yeah. One tube. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The now transmitting we... ball was solid silver, 21 feet long. I always, th always thought about bringing that home. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's yeah. no fault. And you look at it, such antique. Yeah. yeah. Now, this, this cell phone does what 85 people did at about... Oh, yeah. 5,000 square feet of building and 40 transmitters. The cell phone does the same thing. This is so true. This is like, this is going out over my iPhone tonight. Yeah. That's what's so funny. So you can see we're on live. Yeah. And um, I call it up over on my laptop here. It's just amazing. And we have a couple of people watching. So thanks out there. I know that everyone in our office was going to tune in tonight. Laura Belushak says, I just love Bob Epp and his stories. And okay, and Tony Barletta from The Last Guest said, Catch the wave. Thanks, Tony, for tuning in. But thanks, Laura, for, for piping in. And uh, we've already reached almost 200 people, and we've got two people on live watching. So click on, hit the like button, hit the love button. And, um, and remember, if you know a veteran, they're all very deserving to go to Washington and see the monuments. But the, the, the veterans, we can't have this country without them. Yeah, so, so my great. hat is off to Bob at and that then, was an amazing trip. It really was. I'm amazing. so glad that we got you to go to that. Um, to transport the America's veterans to Washington, D.C., to visit those memorials that are dedicated to their service, to their sacrifice, is there's nothing better. And that's the goal of Honor Flight, is to get everybody there. Exactly. In and um, it started out trying to get the World War II veterans to yes. Washington, D.C., since their memorial wasn't even built until 2004, right. a long time after the fact, and a lot of the veterans weren't able to get there. So Honor Flight was created for the World War II veterans mm -hmm. to see their memorial. So obviously now we're, we still, um, first priority are our World War II veterans. We're um, taking Korean War veterans. Actually, this uh, May 20th flight, we have 65 Korean War veterans and 17 World War II veterans, oh, good. and um, we are also now um, accepting applications for Vietnam veterans. Wow. We are not flying them yet, we're not okay. there yet, but we're taking their applications. Well, and the most amazing thing is it's free to the veteran. It, it is Completely. absolutely free for the veteran, and Honor Flight, we, we just depend on the, the graciousness of, the commu of our communities to, um, to donate funds to, to actually send these vets for the for their honor flight and it's an it's a network of honor flights throughout yes. the country we actually there's a, about 133 hubs across the nation in 46 states right and to get to the one here the mm -hmm. southeast florida honor flight um you've got an email address info at honor flight s-e-f-l for southeast florida dot org and what's the website? I think is that it's www.honorflightsefl.org. Okay. So good. it's honorflightsoutheastflorida.org. Right. What happened? Am I losing it? Okay. Oh, okay. that's better. Yeah. Now I can hear myself. Well, good. Um, and it's it's such a worthwhile thing. Um, it started out with one gentleman who was a doctor, who was a pilot, and decided he wanted to take his patients to see the monuments in Washington because he said, are you gonna go? And they're like, yeah. And then six months later, he checked in with them and, did you go? No, <laughs> we don't know how to get there. We don't know what to do. So this is so good. And you go in one day. One day and we, it starts extremely early. Extremely <laughs> early. <laughs> Sorry, Bob, I didn't get off there. Four in the off. morning. <laughs> and, um, and now, in military talk, that's what, oh, dark 30? That is, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, oily. Yeah. <laughs> it is, and uh, and we come home that evening, and again, just like Bob said, the um, if everybody can come out to to Palm Beach International, the the evening of May twentieth to welcome those veterans home and just shake their hand and say thank you. It means the world. Big, big crowds come out. Really amazing. Big crowds. It was really really something to see. Well, I gotta say, my heart was with you. I was watching the clock because, as I told Bob, I. I couldn't believe I had to miss it because I really wanted to go. I was with some people. Well, the client. gentleman who picked me yeah. up, uh, I was just amazed. He does this about every six months if he gets a chance. He works full time. He's got kids with him, his own kids. You're talking yeah. about your guardian, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he, does, yeah. he does. He volunteers. It's yeah. Amazing. Yeah. But he flies up with you and everything else. Yeah. Well, that's the giving uh, nature yeah. of an organization like this. Yeah. You and, know? and the volunteers pay for their seat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. So the veterans are free. The the volunteers yeah, they pay. go with them. Yeah. They pay for their seats. So fantastic people. I think it is. I think it's a really good show of patriotism for our country, 
and it's about time we honored our vets and, and uh, you know there's only one time in our history and during the Vietnam War I think where we just kind of like yeah, they just we didn't shine we yeah. didn't shine too well there yeah. but I think we're doing better now as a country and I think it's really admirable of honor flight to exist and it's growing right I mean it just keeps growing we have a lot of veterans but the population of the World War II veterans are shrinking. Very, very much. And very losing. Much so. All right, you're not going anywhere, though. No, no. <laughs> did, did they entertain you with the World War II era of music and stuff like that during your trip? I, I don't I don't recall. I don't uh, think so. Maybe we should here. Oh, okay. Oh, right. oh. you got to put on headphones. Oh, you have to put on headphones to hear it. <laughs> the Chattanooga, what is this? Oh, Bugle Boy. The Andrew Sisters. Yeah. yeah. There you go. See. <laughs> That's your music, Bob. Yeah. All right. Oh, Lindy, do the Lindy. Help myself. The Bugle Boy. Reveille. Reveille. The Boogie Woogie Bo Bugle Boy. Yeah. That's great. The Andrew Sisters. The Andrew Sisters. You knew them well, right? Uh, three ugly women can make a hit. <laughs> <laughs> but they were good entertainers. They, really oh. they were great. Well, I want to thank you so much, Bob, for yeah. your service to our country, for being a good friend, a, a dear colleague at Global Banker. I'm so glad that my life took its pathway through Martin County to meet you. You're very special. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I know everyone in our office thinks so. Um, so I want to thank everyone out there who's watching. Click on and say you watched it, and that'll be great. And Kathy, thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thank you for having what us. You do. Thank you for your support. Absolutely. I so appreciate Love it. my veterans. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, good night. Thank Thanks, you. Mary, for bringing Bob to us. And next we're going to have Alice Lockhart. Oh, 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 oops. Uh -oh, don't trip. Don't that. fall. Oh, my gosh. I almost fall. I'm going to hurt it. We don't need that. Okay, accident in the studio. Yeah, no, slope all, right. all out. Man okay. down. <laughs> Man down. No, no. Save. So, headphones save. Down. All right, headphones down. Thank you. So, thanks. Good night, Bob. Yeah. Um, we're going to have our next and final guest about the history of Martin County. But before they come in, or as they come in, I'll be telling you that thanks to our sponsor, Celia T. Lucente. She's a senior loan officer at East Coast Mortgage Lenders. And she provides the freedom to finance for all buyers, from first-time home buyers, business owners, and investors. She has over 26 lenders from which to choose, tailoring a mortgage to fit all your needs. Celia consistently provides the clear to close, a welcome phrase to all, well before the contract closing date. If you need a mortgage or you think you can't get one, just call Celia at 772-204-0817. That's 772-204-0817. And also, T.C. Palm Home Inspections. I wanted to give them a shout out. Uh, their family owned and operated home inspection company servicing St. Lucie, Martin, and Palm Beach counties, fully licensed and insured with the state of Florida. T.C. Palm Home Inspections performs complete home inspections and pre-inspections to home buyers and sellers. They also do insurance inspections, which include wind mitigation, four point inspections, and roof certifications. So give Gary Mulka of T.C. Palm Home Inspections a call at 772-678-8133. That's 678-8133. And check out their website at tcpalmhomeinspections.com. That's tcpalmhomeinspections.com. And thanks to my sponsors. I really appreciate it. They're doing a good thing and making a difference in the community because they're supporting this show that highlights people making a difference in the community. And some of those people have joined me now. My third and last and special segment. To my right is Barbara Osborne. And to her right is Alice Luckhart. And Alice is a native of Florida, a graduate of FSU, and a seventh grade social studies teacher for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And now a freelance historical and genealogical researcher and a writer since 98. You're published. You're a member of the International Society of Family History Writers and Editors. Mm -hmm. And in April 2010, you were awarded third place in the nation for an outstanding geneal genealogical magazine article published in 2009. Yes. And in 2013, you received an honor from the museum, the Heritage Museum mm -hmm. of Stewart. No, it was actually so, from the, for, the oh, county. Sorry, the county. Okay, the county. Sorry, but regarding the heritage. Being a yeah. preservationist. Right. Being My husband and I, Greg and I. Wonderful. Yes. Congratulations. And Barbara, fill us in a little bit. I know I met you. We are involved in lots of 
things together. You can kind of come real close. Yes. And if you're a native here or you moved here from somewhere else, I know we met at the beach. Yes. <laughs> that was fun. Yes. Spelling out by the land. Yes. We're river warriors. We are river warriors together. So yes. it's my first time to get a chance to interview you. Well, we are families from California. Okay. And um, uh, Santa Barbara is uh, very ecologically minded. Mm -hmm. And when we came here and we saw how beautiful it was and we saw what was happening, we had to get involved. Good. And um, so not only historically, our son, Nat Osborne, who teaches at Pine School History, ah. has a book that came out, Indian River Lagoon, oh, wonderful. Environmental History. Oh, good. And he also is the head of the Historic Preservation Board, which is the board, the Martin County Board, which is doing this month of Yes, Three lectures. And we want to get right into it. I've got this huge yes. two-page list from the yes. internet. Yes. And you can go there too and look. And it was published in the Stuart News on April mm -hmm. 30th. Correct. A whole month, a slew of things going on. And today my friend Gail Ryan did live. Marty Baum was being a mm -hmm. character of, mm -hmm. of Stuart of Martin County. His, yeah, his I, ancestor. Yes. And unfortunately I had to miss the uh, Mr. and Mrs. today. It was at noon. I, my you, husband and I did. Yes. Captain Henry and Abby Sewell at uh, the Captain Sewell's house with and Sandy Thurlow yes. interviewed us as if we were in our first person. So I love that it. was great fun. And then afterwards, Alice, we went up to All Saints and we posed by our tombstones. Oh dear! We were in period dress with my parasol, and my husband actually even. Should I say it? Laid down oh on with gosh. the tombstone as a pillow. So. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Well, it's quite exciting because when you bring history to life, I think that's what Marty was doing and you did, and he did it in a schoolroom, in a classroom. Mm -hmm. And I think that's wonderful because mm -hmm. the children then really remember it and mm -hmm. get more out of it, I think. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be doing more presentations like that through the month? Possibly we're going to have her do it again at okay, the Captain good. Sewell's house because that is a special uh, tour of the house every yeah. Wednesday okay. till the end of the month of May. Okay. So oh, good. So that's a highlight. At noon on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. Okay. I like that. And then before that is yeah. a free tour of Tuckahoe Mansion. Oh, okay. And if you don't know where Tuckahoe Mansion is, you're living under a rock. That is a beautiful place up Indian, on Indian you know, Riverside Park. Indian yeah. Riverside Park, yeah. absolutely. So, and what are some other highlights that are coming up? Well, Alice has a lecture on the 18th, Thursday the 18th, at Lake Library. Oh, good. What time? At seven. Six, at six o'clock. At six o'clock. Six o'clock okay. there. Lasts for about an hour and a half. And I've got vintage photos not only of Stewart and Jensen and Palm City and Hope Sound, you know, some dating back over a hundred years wow. to give you ideas of what was here and what still is here. Yeah. And that's the whole purpose of preservation. To, you know, I don't mind something being repurposed. Mm -hmm. Just don't tear it down. Right. Once it's, it's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. Yeah. So that's and, our whole purpose. And we've been around a little over a hundred years now, mm -hmm. which is amazing. And, and I want to give kudos to Martin County yeah. um, because they are very historically preservation minded, minded. Yes. Like they are our, our they're our umbrella mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. historic preservation board is un is a martin county board well it really is good to see that because i'll never forget they were going to tear down uh in new york city grand central station mm -hmm. and jackie O oh, saved it mm -hmm. single-handedly remember and it takes a strong mm -hmm. you know spirit like that and it takes the mind of the people, the will of the people, to realize mm -hmm. these are special qualities about a place. Mm -hmm. that, and that's what attracts people here. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to have, you know, high-rise condos. Thank goodness for the four-story moratorium. Mm -hmm. It makes us so special. Thank you, Maggie Urchella. Yes, thank you, Maggie <laughs> Urchella. And the others that were part of that commission back then, that was at least, gosh, 20, 25 mm -hmm. more years ago. Mm -hmm. In 87, or 30-something years ago. Yeah. 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 And that's one of the first things I learned when I was getting my license as a sure. realtor here is about the comprehensive, the master comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. And that, and like, we didn't have that in Texas. And in Houston, there's no zoning. So I was like, what's that? What is a comprehensive plan? Well, it's wonderful. It's a thoughtful, you know, planned mm -hmm. out into the future, mm -hmm. thinking ahead, not just for today. Right. And not just about, you know, developers and things like that. How, how much money can we make today? So it's really, because you, you, in the long run, I think you do better. You, make more money maybe on tourists and things like that mm -hmm. and hotels in the right places mm -hmm. you know and I love the river walk that they've enhanced oh, that even better yes. right right mm -hmm. so those are things that embellish what we have and we have the music down there and the green market there now will you be doing things on the weekends I'm sure this Saturday in fact 
will be Stuart Heritage Day. Okay. And we're going to focus on places right downtown, easily can be walked at. There'll be the trolley, we'll have a map so that people can know exactly what's open. Also, there'll be balloons in front of the historic places okay, that are open good. and signs. So there's no missing it. But the maps are available at the Stuart Heritage. Now I'm going to run down very quickly some okay. of the places this Saturday. You don't okay. want to miss them. Good. All free. First of all, the Stuart Heritage Museum. Okay. Not only will you tour the regular main uh, area, but the upstairs and the basement. There's a basement I love there. It. And this is the feed store. If you don't realize, it's that cute little red feed store. Yeah. And it was a real true uh, merchandising George store. Park store. He started yes. in 1901. Right. And what's that's what's upstairs. It's where he lived. He lived, right. Yes. I love that. So that is so neat. So you'll get to tour all three levels yeah. this Saturday. You can also pick up your maps. And I got to say, the, the basement's fabulous. It is. Photos of it's even better. Martin County. Yeah. Go ahead. Even sorry. better. Okay. Uh, next door to it, you'll see a peak roof house. That was a home, mm -hmm. the Parks Atwood House, 1903. And that name Parks, you sound familiar? Because it was his brother built that one oh. in 1903, George's brother. And uh, it has been owned by the Atwood family over the years, and it's been them living there or rentals, but it's right now owned by the city, and they rent it out to a survey company. But we are, have permission to tour. So if I've done that tour, given that tour, it's a wonderful place. Oh. Another place, you go a little bit down, down on uh, St. Lucie Avenue, we have the new Vine and Barley uh, restaurant opening up, but that place has such history. 1912 was when it was the Stewart Bank. We had no bank before 1912. Oh. The very first bank was right there on that corner, and uh, it served also as the Citizens Bank in 1933. Again, Citizens comes in when we hadn't had any banks during the Great Depression, no banks opened up. And then eventually Citizens moves to another location closer to Haney Circle and eventually becomes Seacoast ah, that we know today. Sure. And the people who will be doing the tour of mm -hmm. this bank are the original family, the Hudson family. Oh, they are the ones who goodness. started yes. Citizens Bank and eventually goes to Seacoast. So we have Dale Hudson and his brother Corky. You can't get any better than that, than no, knowing the history. history. That's yeah. wonderful. And yeah. also, Rick Crary will be giving mm -hmm. a tour. On the other side of the museum is the Crary House. Now, the Crary House didn't start there. It was mm -hmm. a couple of miles away, closer to the hospital area. But it needed to be saved, and so the city brought it up to right by the uh, museum. And it will be Rick Crary himself. Again, it's better to get the first-hand knowledge. And he will be giving the tour of the Crary House. So that's oh, on Saturday. Good. We're also doing the Coventry Hotel and Apartments. Now, we know it today is the old Colorado Inn. Uh -huh. Okay, beautiful area. Uh -huh. And when you step through that and look at the places and the rooms, which have been kept a lot like they were, yes. you know, in the 10s and in the 20s and the 30s, but modernized, yes, it yes. makes it even better. So it's a wonderful place. And that's Sandy Thurlow, who will be giving that tour. Oh. So you see we're getting the top-notch people. You are. To handle top, this. Top, top. And a top notch person just chimed in. Hi, Julia. Christina Stamper. She's been a guest on the show. She's liking the show and saying hello. And it's Hi. a great show. And Jane Harness yeah. is in my office saying good show. So I just want to give that shout out. Yay. Yay. And thanks on Facebook. And then one of the favorite places that everybody loves is the Lyric Theater. 1926. Oh, yes. Remember, this is our third Lyric Theater. Really? Yeah, really. I and that's that where I will be covering, I'm doing that tour, and I'll cover about theater number one and theater number two, besides theater number three that opened up in 26. Oh. And extra special, our own Mary Walton Jones, who is the director of the museum, it's her grandfather that built the Lyric Theater. Oh my goodness. And, built it. She, and she got Preservation of the Year Award from the Martin County Preservation Board this year. This year. Oh, the award program fantastic. was on Monday. This is award-winning history. Award winning. And I'm learning so much right we here. Only I get the wait. best. I really want to come. And the best thing is it's free. Everybody, did you hear that? The four-letter yes. word that starts mm -hmm. with F that we like? Free. Yes. <laughs> My motto is if it's free, it's for me. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Oh, good. Continue, please, Alice. Well, again, then going on other days, we've got yes. like May 9th, the Tuesday, 530. There's a special concert that's going to be given over by the Cultural Courthouse. Okay. Yes. Treasure Coast Youth Symphony. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But not the whole symphony. Yeah. Right. Right, right. And then on that same Tuesday, but in the evening, 7 p.m., at the Lyric, this is the only thing that's going to cost, it's $5 a ticket, will be the showing, one time only, of The Gentle Giant. That was a movie filmed in Port Salerno oh. in September 1966. It has Dennis Weaver, Vera Miles, and Clint Howard, 
and Bruno the Bear. That was his <laughs> real name. But he went by Ben as a character. Yes, yes. So it's a fabulous movie. Everybody will enjoy it. Kids, parents, everybody will love that. So that's at the Lyric. Tickets are on sale at the Lyric right now. Okay. So that's coming up. Good. And then we've got programs at the Apollo School in Hope Sound and programs fishing in Salerno, the you know fishing village area. John, John Hennessy. Yes, loads of different things. Mm -hmm. And then Barbara's family will be represented. Ah. <laughs> Yes, um, Tuesday, uh, Thursday the 11th at the U.S. Sailing Center, uh -huh. which is a county right. um, property. Um, our son Nathaniel Osborne, who right. teaches at Pine School History right. and has his, his, his book on the Indian book. River Lagoon. Right. And also is a head um, sailing coach for the high school um, racing teams. Uh -huh. So he is doing a lecture at 7 o'clock at the Sailing Center on Thursday, May 11th on the early sailing craft of the Indian River Lagoon, they were very, they were sharpies that came down, they were like the F-150s. Uh -huh. We didn't have roads, so you only got around by boats. So what they did was they had these big, huge sailed, gaffed rig sailboats, very shallow draft with a swing keel, Ooh. and that's how they got around the river. Um, and before Captain Sewell opened up the Port St. Lucie, uh, the St. Lucie Inlet mm -hmm. in, around 1900, mm -hmm. It was all fresh water, and it was grassy, and it was stinky, and it was smelly, kind of like what we had last year. Yeah, yeah. But it was natural. Yeah. And so um, when Captain Sewell um, and his friends opened up the St. Lucie Inlet, then they allowed the salt water to come in, and we, it was more, you know, you can navigate it better. Mm -hmm. But um, before then, everybody, or even then, everybody used these boats called the Sharpies. Interesting. And I mean, even to go to school. Yeah. If oh, people don't realize that, the yeah. school was built along the edge of the river. On the far side, there were Seminole uh, Avenue is, okay. and they had to travel by boat to get to school even. That is Roads amazing. just didn't exist. Well, you know, it's hard to believe, but that's true. And speaking of the river, another friend of ours, uh, um, Gomes, uh, Nether Irene, 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 Irene joined. Yeah, yeah. And Drift now Lisa Driftwood, don't you? from the Driftwood Hotel and Florida yeah. Girl Lisa joined. Yes. And uh, Lisa Pinkley has joined. Thank you so much. And Christina says, I love how much this town preserves our history. Absolutely. Yes. So, and everybody out there, if you continue to support that kind of effort, we can keep it this way. You know, remember that when it comes time to vote for people. <laughs> and keep in mind, we don't preserve just the buildings. Everybody thinks it's right, buildings. Right. One good thing we're doing on Memorial Day, which is the 29th of Monday, there'll be the regular Memorial Day parade, and there'll be a special monument that will be dedicated for the first time oh. at that time, right by the flagpole and by yes. the big arch. Yes. And it will be dedicated to two local boys who grew up in this area and died, unfortunately, in their own individual war. Oh. One is Harold Johns from World War I. Mm -hmm. He was one of the first children born here and then dies in World War I. Oh. And then we have Larry Brown, who, you know, many years later and goes to Vietnam and is killed in Vietnam. So two very important veterans, and there'll be a special plaque and a special monument dedicated at that time. How so it's not just, again, no, it's buildings, the people. It's, it's the, the people. people. It's, that's what makes up Martin County, and the Martin County difference is the people. And, you know, the Daughters of the American Re Revolution, I'm a member of that, and you've come and lectured there for us. Um, it's amazing because they do want to preserve the history of our country, number one, but also value our veterans, and that's mm -hmm. how they got involved. They sponsor somebody, for, you know, to go on the flight, everything. Mm -hmm. So it's really great. When we work together, because we're, we're all one fabric, one weave. So um, what's the... Uh, the it goes all the way through. Where can people go now and find this? Well, on, oh, well, we have these calendars at the Blake Library okay. at the Stewart Heritage Museum. It's a feed store. And I also want to say that the House of Refuge is not normally open for free, but they are open. Um, when, is, when is House of Refuge open? But uh, Saint, uh, All Saints Here is, it is giving on a the tour. Tenth. Okay. On the 10th. On the 10th. Okay, this tenth. Friday the 5th, All Saints oh. is giving a tour in the afternoon. Cinco de Mayo. And, and then House of Refuge tour is on the 10th, and these are all free. Oh, so wow. everybody's chipping in, everybody is um, doing their part, and I, I, must, I must congratulate Martin County General Services, Harold Markey, Renee Boykin. They Good. are our, um, and, and, the, and the Martin County Historic Preservation Board. This is all free, and it's national 
history month in May all around the country. All around the country. And nobody's oh. got a calendar this packed. We are number one. I'd say so. You've got mm -hmm. something on every day. I researched it. I found out. We were number one on that. I believe you. <laughs> well, Alice, you're quite the historian, and thank you so much. And Barbara Osborne, thank you so much. Thank you. And I want to thank all my guests tonight. We had a great show. We had Women's Club of Stewart, uh, Mona Salisbury with Catch the Wave of Hope with Lynn Barletta, who started that. It's a community organization fighting human trafficking. And you want to go to the gala event this Saturday at Yacht and Country Club, $150 a ticket, 6 o'clock. Thank Honor Flight for being here with Bob Epp, my colleague, and Kathy Sreenan, who works for, uh, with Honor Flight. And thank you, Frank, for being such a great engineer. Oh, and you're so sweet. Yeah, and my sponsors, I'd like to thank TC Palm Home Inspection, Celia T. Lucenti with East Coast Mortgage, and Rivercrest Insurance, Jeff and Nicole Meir, and Francesca Morgan of Francesca Morgan Interiors. See you next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. All right. Okay. You are listening to WSTU Stewart. Thank you. And we're still on Facebook, so we can say hi. And next week's going to be another great show with um, Future Six and also uh, Citizens for Clean Water. They're teaming up on a oh, surfing sure. event. It's sure. really great for the Evan, kids. Evan. Evan. Yes, Evan. Hey, Frank, we have yeah. weak so, almost so the whole time. Is honey, it? We talk less <laughs> until we're off the air. Okay, this will be on YouTube later tonight. Thank you. It'll be on YouTube. And I'm using it here, so yeah.